propitiation. Of all the doctrines of the cross, the doctrine of propitiation is probably the least preached and the most neglected within the church and on the street. The doctrine of propitiation is foundational to the understanding of the reason why Christ came and died on the cross. The definition of propitiation is the turning away of wrath by an offering or to pacify the wrath of someone offended. Some synonyms that we can use when we're talking about this word are to appease, to disarm, to placate, or to pacify. When you give someone a gift to find his favor and make peace after a fight, that is a propitiation. And man fights with God through his sin, and he needs propitiation to find his favor. The reason it is so neglected, this doctrine within the church, is because it explains one of the characteristics of God that man does not like to talk about and makes him feel very uncomfortable, and that is God's wrath. It is impossible to talk about this doctrine without talking about the wrath, the offended, and the word and propitiation. You see, Jesus came to, to be that target of God's wrath on the cross to satisfy God's justice so that His anger would be turned away from us. The word propitiation is mentioned four times in the New Testament. And by looking at these four verses, we can answer four important questions about propitiation. Number one, why do we need a propitiation? Number two, who is able to be our propitiation? And number three, how large is the influence of this propitiation? And number four, why did God supply a propitiation? Why do we need a propitiation? The New Living Translation says in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 25, For all have sinned, all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet now God in His gracious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Christ Jesus, who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. That is propitiation. We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed His blood, sacrificing His life for us. God was being entirely fair and just when He did not punish those who sinned in former times. You see, these verse here says that God is holy and we are all sinners. Think about this. Every hour of every day, there are millions of sins which God sees. Sins which need to be accounted for in God's heavenly account book. His, His justice demands that every sin be weighed and accounted for. And because He is just and holy, his ma- he, he manifests His character in righteous anger at the sin of the world. And this holy anger was poured out upon Jesus when He died on the cross. But if we do not believe that, then that wrath of God for our sins is poured out upon us. It says in John chapter 3, verses 36, For all who believe in God's Son have eternal life. Those who don't obey the Son will never experience eternal life. But the wrath of God remains upon them. Some other verses that talk about the wrath of God are Psalm 711, also in Romans chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. They share more in detail about the wrath of God. Also, I would suggest that you look in the shameless book that Paul Collins has written because it talks more about this topic. But here in Romans chapter 3, verses 25, we see why we need a propitiation. It is because we are sinners. God is angry with that sin that we have committed, and it must be punished. And there was only one person who could take that punishment. His name was Jesus Christ. We must preach that as sinners, 
as they believe that the blood of Jesus is an all-sufficient appeasement to God for everyone, then they can be saved. So who is able to be our propitiation? It says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, the second time that the word propitiation is mentioned, it says, Therefore he, talking about Jesus Christ, had to be made like his brethren in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for our sins. Only someone tempted like us, but never sinning, could make propitiation for us in the presence of God. Only Jesus could do it. And you see, we must preach that Jesus and only He was faithful to live a perfect life. So, how large is the influence of Christ's propitiation? This wonderful truth we find in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. He says, Little children, I am writing these things to you so you may not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Jesus drank the bitter cup of God's wrath when He died on the cross. He did this so that no one would have to drink the cup of God's wrath. You see here in this verse it says, but for those of the whole world, this propitiation is all-inclusive. It's for everybody in the world who has ever sinned. And what's more, there is no sin so big or so bad that Jesus did not pay for it when He died on the cross. Preacher, this is a truth that we need to convey when we are preaching on the street. He paid it all. For all the sins of the world. And why did God supply for us this propitiation? What was the motive for God putting on flesh and coming and taking His own punishment so that His anger towards us could be satisfied? It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So while it is true that Jesus being our propitiation was so that God's justice could be satisfied, we need to remember that the motivation for Him paying the ultimate price for our salvation was love. Jesus has done as much as He could do he took the punishment. He felt the wrath of God, which should have been directed towards us. The greatest love of all times was manifested when Jesus took our punishment for our sins. And it's very important that when we talk about the wrath of God on the street, and we preach this from on top of the red box, that we must always talk about why Jesus felt that wrath and took that wrath for us. It was because He loved us. Here are some concluding thoughts about this topic. When we preach about propitiation from on top of the red box, we do not need to use the word propitiation. People on the street are not going to understand this theological word. But what we do need to convey is the idea that Jesus took upon Himself the wrath of God that should have come upon us so that justice could be served. And if we can preach that by believing in Jesus, taking our place on the cross, we do not have to receive the wrath of God on Judgment Day, then we'll be allowed to go into the very presence of God. Some other key ideas, things that we need to keep in mind when we're preaching about this is that the God of all love is a myth. 
God is angry with our sin. And Jesus took our place on the cross. We must believe that He took our punishment of God's anger. And through believing and repenting, instead of looking forward to the wrath of God on Judgment Day, we can receive God's salvation and be welcomed into His presence forever. It's also important to remember that the person on the street who has never put his faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, he has no propitiation. In other words, the wrath of God is still over that person on the street. So by preaching propitiation, this is, a, is New Testament evangelism. And if we preach it, it will result in fewer false conversions.